Oh, okay, everyone. I want to welcome you to Singles Night Thursday. I uh, want to work everybody in to a night of fun, a night of learning, um, and hopefully, you know, we can have a little fun along the way. But the first thing I want to say again um, is to welcome everybody in. Um, hope everybody has had a great week and that this is a place we come and to share some of the things of God and to move uh, ourselves in a whole new direction. You know, the first thing I want to do, um, if Shelly, if you don't mind to open us up in prayer. Hello. Hello. Miss Shelley, are you there? I, I am here. Uh, give me one moment, please. Okay. I apologize, guys. I, I was uh, no problem. Up for <laughs> <laughs> Were you calling me? I'm so sorry. No, that's okay. Was I supposed to be doing something? I'm yeah, sorry. yeah. Okay. Yeah, I wanted you to open us up in prayer, if you don't mind. Oh, sure, sure. <laughs> All right, Father God, we thank you once again that we are here in another Thursday night. Hopefully we are here to learn a little bit more about your precious love, your unfor unforgiving love, your, your immaculate love, that love that we <laughs> so want day in and day out of our lives. Um, hopefully our facilitator tonight, Mr. Joe, will be able to touch on that and, and be able to just give us another point of view uh, for some of us, a male point of view. Um, we thank you, God, once again, for just allowing us to meet every Thursday night safe and sound. And we just love you. We just <laughs> want to take this moment to love on you a little bit more. Thank you, God. And uh, have a good night, everyone. Amen. 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 Again, welcome, everybody, again, to a new uh, Thursday night. Um, you know, th this whole month, um, we've been talking pretty much about love. Um, and it's, it's the month of love. Uh, we talk, uh, you know, we just went through uh, Valentine's Day. And I think that was a day that was different for a lot of people. But in all, we, we must learn that uh, even in that time or that season, you know, all of us go through different feelings, but through it all, we have to learn to love ourselves. Um, and that's important. That's so very, very important. So tonight, I want to do something a little bit different. I want to do a little bit of a different twist on things. So I welcome and thank you, family. And I'm going to shift things in a different direction. This is what I want to kind of do. I, I want to kind of invite some friends of mine that may have experienced love uh, all in different format. And so I want to have a little fun with it. My fr first friend that we're going to invite into our center tonight, his name is Mr. Elma Fudd. Uh, and I want to do something like what Elma Fudd would say. I'm going to sound a little bit like him, and hopefully I can kind of mimic him here. He was, he used to say, I'm looking for wolf in all the wrong way, fit. looking for wolf. And I'm saying that to say this. At some point in our lives, we were all kind of looking for love and maybe looking in the wrong places. But that was something we did. And then we remember that story. That story has always been around. And my second guest I want to, and we'll talk a little bit more about that later on. Um, my second friend I want to invite um, would be Miss Tina Turner. And she would sing the song, what love got to do with it, got to do with it. I know I don't sound like her, but 
you get the gist of what I'm saying. They all have their stories and we all remember hers. And after I get through the characters, we'll go back and kind of do a little bit of clips from each of the, their own stories. Um, my next person will be Miss Tony Braxton. And she used to say, love should have brought you home last night. And that was the essence of her story. Um, and we'll elaborate a little bit about that too. And then we have the story, there's a thin line between love and hate. We saw that whole scene with Martin Lawrence and how all that played out. But again, I'm shifting it in a, in a whole different direction. And I'm saying, when we start, we, I talked a little bit about Elmer Ford and how we used to look for love and, and all the wrong places, never looking within, always looking outside of us. And that didn't bring us what we needed. So, and again, I talked a little bit about um, Tina Turner. We, we understood kind of her whole or. It was about a young lady that was pretty well a country girl and she had this great gift. She had a voice a beautiful voice. She came to the city, um, got and started out with a group just singing and out of the view, uh, out of one night being out, she started to sing. And at that time, Ike Turner and his band was there and I think she maybe didn't do things the first couple of times, but out of the blue, one night, here comes this beautiful voice. I mean, that kind of set everybody on fire. And we kind of know the story how, again, she was a, she was kind of like, you would say maybe a, she, in the lion's den and how such a beautiful person um, got involved seemingly with a person that had her best interests at heart. And we kind of know as the story goes, um, how he started out real nice with her. And through time and winging her and putting her on his wing, she beca he became something that was not so good for. And, I, and I, I bring that up to say how sometimes things start out great and, and all of the good intentions are there, but then the true person comes up. And, and the reason I'm telling the story is this. This is what I want to bring forward and I want others to talk about is, is how sometime we think this is that and it's really not. How love, love never binds a whole. Love always liberates. And in, in the story with Tina, we, we see Ike always want everything to go through him, don't want to be our own person. He's overly protective. I don't call it protective. I think he was the type of person that loved control. And with that said, uh, I wanted to see if anybody would have any comments on this particular story. So I wanted to put it out there and say, does anybody have comments on that or have uh, something to say to the effect of that? 
Well, Joe, um, I'm, I'm trying to eat my dinner, <laughs> but, but um, I got me a little piece of bread over here. But um, yeah, Ike was, um, you know, how, like you said, how relationships, you thought it was this, but it's now that. Right. And I, and I do believe, I do believe that um, he, he loved her, but I think that in times when we, when we get involved with, in relationships, and I can say this for myself, when I got married, I didn't know all the background. <laughs> I didn't know all the background situations that had gone on in my ex-husband's family, some of the um, situations that weren't the ones that you want to testify about, you know, all of the abuse and the molestation that went on in the family, uh, didn't know all that. So, you, you know, you get married or maybe Tina got married to this man and mm -hmm. really didn't know that that part to Ike. So all she right. saw is what she fell in love with or got infatuated with. And as they got married and as the relationship formed, then she saw this new man that showed up that was already there. He didn't reveal himself unto right. her. Right, right. Yeah, a certain point. So yes, he was controlling. He was very mean. Yes. <laughs> you know, there was a lot of character characteristics about him that, and about people sometimes, they just don't show their true self. You know, they're behind a mask. And when they like got you, like the hook is in your mouth. Right, you right. You, here comes the real, like the real thing. Like, is that Coke or Pepsi? The real thing. <laughs> here it comes, you know, and you get to see that person. You're already committed. You're already in the relationship. You know, you might have a couple of kids in a house. And here comes the, the stuff. And nobody told you about, and it materializes in your life. Mm -hmm. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna yield my mic on that. <laughs> get, that's my sandwich. I'll be back. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so, is there anyone else would like to make comment, please? You know, I'm. Hey, Mr. Joe, 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 hey. Joe. <laughs> Listen, when you brought up Tina Turner, I. It, it's funny because I used to always. Not always, but I always looked at that story. And, um, you know, again, I've always, you know, brought up my relationship sure, issues sure. and her and I kind of had similarities in it. And I would always say, well, at least I'm Tina Turner. You know, throughout my little trials, I would always, always say, well, if Tina could do it, I could do it. If <laughs> Tina did it, I could do it. So it's funny that you brought her up as um, one of your topics tonight. Um, Ike was something else. Yes. You know, and, and, you know, to see a woman of, of such power and um, she was, uh, you know, strong in her in, in what she did, you know, right. she was, you know, with her singing and, and everything with her career and to watch her have someone just belittle her and and put her down and, and you know, put her through all that. It's just it, it's amazing what a little bit of self-love just, yes. in, you know, would have gotten her through that and. Um, you know, of course, hindsight is twenty twenty. When you look back at it, I thought about myself, and I was like, just a little bit, just me, just saying to myself, I love you enough that you don't yes. need this. And she could have took her career um, soaring farther. I I believe, you yes. know, if she would have just had enough self love to let him go. Um, yeah, that talent was in her. It's not something that Ike gave her. Right, um, he might have pushed her. But once she got the taste of it, once she got the hang of it, Tina Turner would have been on fire without yes. it. So, but it all started with just this, with you know, with her mind yes. renewing and transforming, renewing and transforming of the mind. Yes, and just a little bit of self love would yes. have gotten her, gotten her, you know, through it. So, I'm glad you brought her up. I, I forgot yeah. about it. Well, let me pose another question. Since, we, do you think going through all of that made her better? In the end, yeah, 
Yeah. In the end, I mean, I, I, you know, she, she, when you go through domestic violence and when you go through that, you know what not to, to, to deal with going forward. Yes. But while you're in it, while you're in it, you are weak. You feel like no one loves you. You just feel it's a lot of emotions that you're going through. But once you're out of it, you, it's a big lesson. It's, it's like, no, no one's ever going to make me feel like that ever again. Yes. Yes. So it strengthens you. It makes you stronger and everything, every test that you go through is a testimony at the end. So, you know, what she went through is, is now it, it's a catapult for, for women across the world. She used her platform. She told her story. Yes. It just let every, so, yeah, it strengthened her. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, I, I, and, and, so, and, can oh, I ask yeah. you, Shelly, something? Yeah, sure. <clears throat> Shelly, since you've experienced that, I'm, I'm just going to ask it as if you were in Tina's shoes for a minute. Do you, do you feel that she had to get past fear? Yes. Before she could actually step out into her identity. Absolutely. There's, there's a healing. Yeah, she has to go. She had to go through a lot of healing, a lot of healing of the mind and just healing of the body. She had to go through a lot before she got to that that place that we see her now. Um, but yeah, she yeah, a lot of work had to happen. Yeah, a lot of work. A lot yes. of work. And, and you know, <laughs> that's what. So I mean. Tina, she probably, I'm just thinking because of her notoriety, she probably had more cash or could obtain cash than, uh, you know, the normal, like me, you, or, you know, just us, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And that's why it's so important that we have a community like this or have those that we can talk to that if we don't have answers that we can find someone to help and assist you know, in those certain times where you need that support. So yeah, absolutely. I'm just going to say that, but I'm going to let Joe go ahead. <laughs> but, you know, I, I, I mean, listening to uh, what you were saying, Shelly, and what you were saying, Faith, you know, it's ironic. This, this week, I encountered two people that has been under that. Um, just in my office and uh, the young lady said that she was in it for a while and he actually was so vindictive. He started to put things on the credit. He started to belittle everywhere. I mean, it was like, but now she's delivered. Now, the one thing that, that happened with her that I thought was amazing, she can laugh at it now. She, she knows she's over. And yeah. from that, however painful it was, she's a better person. Absolutely. And, and, and I think what we learn, and even when we're in situation, and it, it, this whole situ- scenario could be reversed. Because, uh, you know, I've been through something similar to that on the other side. But mm-hmm. even with my own testimony and seeing it from a different perspective, This young lady uh, who will now be 33, she went through that. She's so much better. She's a minister now. And she's able to talk to others about that situation, the things to look for. So she, you know, her own pain is what I'm saying, helps her to help others. And I guess from a man's perspective, I'm speaking of myself, I didn't know all that went on that to that capacity. And there are people that I've learned and sometimes people sell, they can be comfortable with you and they tell what well, all the bodies lie. And you like, wow, how did, you know? But I think it comes from being comfortable and it comes from a connection with where you think you're safe with that person. And, and sometimes uh, that happens. That happens more than you realize. And I think it's eye-opening for me because, again, you never know how much of that go on. You mm-hmm. never know, like Faith said, people wear a mask. Some people can be a, behind a white picket fence and mm-hmm. never talk. Mm-hmm. But when they go out in public, it's almost they have to put on this persona that everything oh, yeah. is great. 
but it's not. It's it's really not. So anyway, I, I, I thought about that and I can say I brought her up. I brought Tony Braxton. And you know, and, and we'll move on to Tony Braxton. What I was thinking about with Tony Braxton was this. She said, love should brought you home last night. Mm. But, but my question is this, and I wanted to bring forward, why didn't love bring him home? Or mm. why didn't love bring her home? Mm -hmm. Was it not there? If he didn't come home or she didn't come home, then there was no love at home. Or they had shifted in a whole nother direction. So mm -hmm. because if you coming home, you coming home. With, with no hesitation. So I wanted to get a little bit of feedback on that and then we'll move forward to some others. Um, I know, I know I'm know. i gonna jump in real quick. I think Miss Tracy was trying to jump in, but I, okay. I, when you brought that up, that brought me to a, a pastor, a Bishop, Bishop Jakes would always say, he probably checked out a long time ago, but his, his body was there, <laughs> but his mind, he was checked out a long time ago. It might've been, you know, when you didn't, when uh, you didn't cook his dinner or something and, you know, y'all got into an argument about it and you didn't, you didn't resolve that issue. So it, it could, when a man doesn't do what you want him to do or didn't, you know, like you said, didn't come home last night, it might've been last night he didn't come home, but he wasn't home. He, even though his body was there every other night, he had checked out a long time ago. Okay. It's just now the physical is happening. Like he physically ain't there no more. To get to that point, he had to have checked out a long time ago, meaning that he was out of that relationship a long time ago. He just didn't physically leave yet. That's right. You know, so when you say that, that's what that I always think about that when a man actually does not come home or he decides to to uh, end the relationship it's not it didn't just happen at that moment. It wasn't right. just then he had to have checked out a long time ago. And then you have to figure out when did he check out? When did that relationship end or when did it, when did things change that made him not come home or made her not come home? But it had it didn't just happen overnight. That's something that happened a long time ago and uh, it just physically happened again. So I, that's, you know, like what I, when he Bishop Jakes preaches about that, it always makes me look back at some of my past relationships and realize, man, that's when he checked out. Yeah, it wasn't it wasn't what we think it is. It, you know, oh, he just didn't show up last night or he didn't come over or he, he not answered my calls. It's not because of what argument you had last night. It could have been the argument five months ago. That's right. He had checked out five months ago. You just didn't know. So, yeah, right. I love this, Mr. Joe. Uh, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. I have a um, someone that I know in in Maryland and um, my really my girlfriend called me as her cousin and told me that um, her cousin and her husband are getting a divorce. And I'm like, what? You know, because they've been together for a long time, many, many years. And so she told me that her husband told her that he has not been happy for the last 21 years. Wow. 21 long long years years wow i could not i i you know i'm like are you for real <laughs> i'm like is this i mean 21 mm -hmm. years so i said i just started to pray right yes because if i were in her footstep i mean in her shoes right and my husband told me that he had been happy for 21 years. Mm -hmm. I'm like, it's been very devastating. Devastating. And then you find uh, receipts from mm -hmm. jewelry stores, buying expensive jewelry. And it's definitely somebody else. It's definitely somebody else. But just the point of that, you know, 21 years. And now you're going to say something? Yep, you checked out a long and, time yeah. ago. And now you want me out the house? Mm -hmm. Wow. And, and now you want to remodel your basement? Mm 
<laughs> I'm like, you know what? I'm like, let me let me close my mic right now. <laughs> but I mean, you know, it's like, don't you have, I mean, even though you might not have been happy for 21 years, for you to stay that long, it had to have been either for security or something that he's getting, right? Well, he was getting it at home, eating good, whatever, and getting something outside the home. So he was double dipping, okay? Mm -hmm. So with that, um, you know, I'm, I, I just pray for her because I, I, yes. I just can't see, I can't see it. It's yes. that's hard. That was you really know, hard to swallow. Right. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, Faith, you said something. Let me tell you what you said. He said he wasn't happy. My question is, is she responsible for his happiness? No. No. Somebody else did. I mean, <laughs> I mean, he was happy. Well, I mean, I'm just we I mean, all wrong, I mean, right? We grown, right. Are we in the grown folks room tonight? <laughs> okay, so... <laughs> He was happy. See, that's the thing. That is the thing, how the enemy comes in. Yes. And she and the wife thinks, oh, everything is okay. You know, even in their intimate time, everything is okay. But homeboy is over there outside doing something else with somebody else. And he's happy over there. That's why he was there 21 years, because he was didn't have... You know, he prideful, didn't want nobody to know that their marriage is on the rocks or whatever, um, trying to look good in front of society or whatever. But that's a lot of pain. I mean, for, you know, I just, Miss Joe, yeah. you, have, you have to talk me off the ledge or something. If that happened to me, I'll have to say, oh, let me call Mr. Joe. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, Mr. Mr. I'll, Joe, yes. I'll come there. I'm like, what? Really? Yes, yes. Tamara, yes. Tamara actually said something in the chat, y'all. She said, um, come on, that is, <laughs> yeah, she said, that is too long to be unhappy. That is sad. Was she happy or perpetrating that he was he was happy? And then she said, staying for children sometimes too. That is that is hard. Yeah, it is. It yeah. is hard. But you know. When you think about that, and not judging anybody, but I think you have a sense to some degree when somebody's Absolutely. pulling pulling from you, and mm -hmm. and that's a true sense. That's a true mm -hmm. feeling that mm -hmm. you, you can't deny. So I don't know all the dynamics, and I'm not here to judge anybody. But that's all mm -hmm. I can say. That's a long time. But the ultimate thing is. No matter who we are, we are not responsible for somebody else's happiness. Not a we truly not. And, and I hope in this scenario, and we'll move past this and move on, but I hope she doesn't think that her happiness depended on her mm -hmm. and take that on for herself. Take on something he did and he comes to tell her he's, that he's not happy. Mm -hmm. the key to the happiness is to be happy and that comes from a place within a person you know I, if you need anything your true happiness is who you are and should be in God and, and that's you know to, to be happy is a decision to be happy and anytime I have to depend on somebody else to make me happy, I have not freed myself yet to do that. That's just my thoughts on that, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. Um, Absolutely. Does, does anybody else have a comment before we move on? Miss Tracy. Miss Tracy. Hey, everybody. Hey, hey. hey how are you? <laughs> Mm -hmm. I'm fine. I'm like uh, Miss Faith. I just finished eating. <laughs> <laughs> I had meatloaf. I was in the mood for the meatloaf, mashed potatoes, and green beans. So that's why I was silent for a while. That's <laughs> all right. That's <laughs> right there. Mm. <laughs> well, uh, I thought about that. You know, love should have brought you home, and how you talked about this man was married to his wife, and for 20 years he wasn't happy. It brought me to the mind of the movie. Uh, Diary of a Mad Black Woman. Mm. 
you know, being with him 18 years and he said he wasn't happy all that time. <clears throat> and I looked like, and I looked at her, yeah, she had reason to be angry. How he mistreated her and everything because she had done everything she could do in the marriage. And then when everybody else walked away from him, when he was down and out, she was still there. Mm -hmm. And then when he was kind of getting up, getting on with himself and everything, moving around, she said, forgive her. He said, I already forgave you. She said, but I need you to forgive me for this is when she handed him the ring back in the divorce papers. It was final. Yeah. You know, he was thinking, oh, good. We're going to stay together. We're going to, you know, reunite and everything. But she like, hey, that's a lot of years yeah. to give somebody. Mm -hmm. And then they just toss you aside for something they think is better. I had a friend of mine tell me one time, she said a lot of times, when God gives us somebody or something, he gives us the best. Mm -hmm. But we're so busy looking at something or someone we think is better until we pass up, you know, that we had a good thing. Yeah. And That's I think about the man that was married to this woman in 20 years, you know, he wasn't happy. Probably thinking, you know what, well, she's had kids, she done gained weight, she don't look like she used to look. I said, well, heck, if she's giving you five kids, of course not. <laughs> but you yeah. know. Yeah. And then you getting with some young flip, you spending all your money on her. <laughs> mm -hmm. Then you get with her and you think that, oh, this is the life. Find out the girl can't boil water without a scorching. <laughs> you miss those home cooked <laughs> meals, you miss your clothes being ironed, you know, the things you took your woman for granted for. Wow and everything and then think you can go back but uh, i think about tina turner too yeah tina learned her self-worth that's right and i think when a person truly learns their self-worth you don't they don't go through all that anymore they can love you they can forgive you but they moved on to bigger and better things <laughs> and i have a problem with it you know with with my ex my thing was I was 24 when I met him and dated him and married him. He's my first everything, first boyfriend. First, I didn't even date in high school because I was like the, the nerd and all that type of thing. So I was made fun of a lot as a teen. And then when I met him, I didn't know any better. I didn't know any different. That was the first thing I was exposed to. So I really had nothing to compare it to. But once I decided I don't want to be with somebody mistreating me because I went through domestic violence and it got to a point he got physical with me and I come I hurt him pretty bad because I didn't realize how hard I hit him and knocked him unconscious and had a hard time bringing him to <laughs> nobody not many people know about that right. but that right there let me know I said God when you said to death do us part you didn't mean it like this I said, one of us has got to go, or one of us is going to be leaving here in a pine box. And it wasn't. Yeah. yeah. So, I, you know, it took a lot. It took a lot of courage with me. I said, well, since I'm doing everything, I was paying for the apartment. I had the job. He didn't want to get a job. He wasn't going to get a job. Then I said, you got to go. I packed up his stuff. And when I did that, you name it, things started happening for me. People who wanted to help me, helped me. She said, I would have done it, but because you were with him. And over time, I still went through some bumps in the road, but at the age I am now, looking back on it, I said, Lord, I thank you for the lessons from the heartaches. Yeah. Because now nobody can come in my life and do that to me. Yeah. Unless I allow them to do it. Because like Tina, I learned my self-worth. And if a guy is really interested in me and, you know, thinks I'm worthwhile, he's going to treat me like I'm worthwhile. That's right. But I'm working on my career. I'm working on getting back in the classroom to teach and I'm working yes. on my business. So I've got plenty to keep me occupied, whether <laughs> guys in my life or not. <laughs> Thank you, Tracy. Thank you for that. That, yeah, that just touched yeah. my soul just now. I don't know what it is. You said that was your first time actually saying that out loud. How you feel? Yes. Oh, a whole lot better now. <laughs> but uh, during that time, awesome. That's during awesome. that time, yes, though, I mean, I was always, I always had self-esteem issues because I was treated as a kid. Yeah. So it took years for me to see myself 
the way God sees me. Wow. Beautiful. Wow, yeah, it is. Sorry, Mr. Joe, yeah. I'm interrupting. Uh, no, 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 that's fine. That's the way so, we want to, you know, and, and, and even in Tina's story, uh, mm -hmm. she had to go within herself mm -hmm. to find the true self. I mean, I, I forget what she started to do. I know she did a lot of meditation and other things, but she was going within the innermost, finding out like we all do at some point in time and want to know that nothing outside of me, me is that person talking to themselves is greater than what my Lord and Savior put in me. That that dignity, that your DNA is something no other person can take from you. And once you learn that, the things and dictates of man don't faze you anymore because you are in tune from that for which you come from. And you know that. It's like at the end of that situation with her, he put a gun out. She says, now, I've been, she's pretty well said, I've been through that. What else you got? Mm -hmm. I've been hit with that. So if you're going to kill me, go and shoot me. And he was shocked. At the end, she became the person that God wanted her to be. And I think through all of what we go through, of any of us, we come here. Tracy shared her story. We all share that because we had a different place. The one thing we learn, and sometimes when you mess up in relationship, people don't stay where they were. If you stay where you are, you stop. But you, when you move from that place and come into the totality of who you are, you totally different. There's no fear factor. What else can you do to me that you haven't done to me? And I think we learned that. And so um, is, is there any other comments before I move on to the next section? I just want to say one more thing, dealing with okay. Tina. When I looked at the movie and her and I got in a fight in the limousine and she ended up yeah. jacking him up. <laughs> <laughs> I think, you know, when he finally went on the couch and went to sleep and she ran out that hotel, yeah. she made up her mind then and there, no more. No more. That's right. And then when they were in divorce court, and he was talking about all this stuff he had and everything, and she literally walked away with nothing. Yes, yes. But her name. Right. That's the confidence she had had finally got in herself. Hey, I can make it without all that stuff. I can make it, you know, with the name because she worked hard for it. <laughs> yes, that's true. And I she'd been so. dancing and singing ever since. <laughs> <laughs> ever since. <laughs> She's still yeah. rolling, yeah. rolling down the river, right? She's still, yeah. she's still rolling, but I wanted to say thank you, Tracy, for sharing. Yes, I, thank I you, I really Tracy. appreciate that. Um, You're welcome. <laughs> and I see the great woman of God that, you know, you are. Yes, 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 yes. Being able yes, to yes. share your story. It's so many women, and, and probably men too, that need to hear your story. So, I mean, you know, be proud of where God has brought you. I know you are. But, um, you know, just be proud of where you are. I just commend you for sharing that. Yes, yes. And, you know, and uh, we'll move on. And I was telling the story of a thin line between love and hate, kind of a whole nother spin. In this particular situation, we have Martin Lawrence, kind of a playboy, um, goes out, sees this lady in the club or whatever. The lady looks totally flawless on the outside. I mean, and so I think he first made his move on her and she wasn't uh, favorable with it. Uh, so he came back a second time, he get involved. This is a picture of the perfect woman, seemingly. Great career, big house. Um, success in the sense of the world. And I'm going somewhere with this. 
oh, got all these thrills. And so finally they get to the setting because, you know, he's excited about that. And he, you know, I think he even made some deal with his friends that, you know, he was going to get with her in an intimate setting. Did all that. And, uh, you know, she got kind of involved with him and started to like him. So one night he doesn't show up. I think it may have been a birthday. I'm not sure what it was. Uh, she waited and waited. He never showed. And she got madder and madder. So this seemingly together woman who had real severe issues that wasn't important to him found out the true her through, we saw the scene where she was cutting the cake up and all of that. That wasn't enough. She wanted to get after him and get revenge because she felt like she gave a part of herself to him that he missed treated or took it for granted, however that may be to her. So the true her surface to the point she kidnapped him and she did other things to make his life horrible. But what am, where am I going with this? I'm going with this to say people can be all dressed up. The lights are on, but ain't nobody home. And you have to be careful about that. Because seemingly, but again, you say, did he get back what he gave out? Pretty much. But again, that's, that's kind of, and I'm saying all these to, to lead in another direction, then we'll get there. But um, you see the dynamics here of what, how we look for love in all different places, situations, seemingly this, seemingly that. So um, a thin line between love and hate, um, I would ask, what do, you all think about that situation. Um, any comments on that? I have one. Okay. <laughs> I was gonna say, I got a couple. <laughs> <laughs> I looked at that movie and it was a guy I was seeing at the time. He got so upset and offended because after I spent time with him and that was when I broke the relationship off because it was time to break it off. Have you ever been around a man that gets off on playing head games? Oh, what? Head games. Mm. And in this movie, that was what Martin was doing with this woman. Yeah. And even when they were in the throes of passion, she told him, hey, her husband cheated on her. He was abusive and she killed him. <laughs> but that didn't stop him from doing what he yeah. was doing. Because right. she did tell him, hey, you messed me over. <laughs> this is what <laughs> I do to you. <laughs> That's right. Yes, 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 yes. And, and things. And I look at how people think they're getting over playing mind games with people, you know, telling them this and telling them that. And, of course, he got upset with me. And he made the mistake of trying to run me down to a friend of mine. And she let him have it. And his her aunt let him have it. He said, you mad at Tracy because Tracy figured you out. And I said, I don't need nobody playing head games with me. You know, he thought he was so smart and an intellectual that I wouldn't have enough sense to figure it out. Right. And I said, you don't like this movie because this movie is about a man like you. <laughs> because right. he was so, at this moment is wrong. She making his life hell. I said, well, look at how, look at what he did to her. 
you know, because she was thinking she was, you know, getting in a, a genuine relationship and even on the bet. He didn't win the bet because the bet was you have to get her to fall for you without saying, I love you. Yes, yes, yes. So, yeah. And when she asked, Do you love me? He's like, Well, heck, if I'm going to get it, I better just lie and say, Yeah, I love you. <laughs> right, right. And he right. got way more than he bargained for. <laughs> That's right. That's right. That's right. But she was, she was, she was unstable. Oh, she, she, wasn't, she wasn't, she wasn't all the way there. So, mm -mm. I think that would have happened to any guy. Yes. <laughs> I, yes. Any guy that would have done the right things and, and really truly loved her. She was unstable. Very. She was right. unstable. Her mind, you know, that, that mind, I'm telling y'all, you know, we don't take care of what's going on in here. Everything else falls apart. That's so right. She, That's she was right. unstable. She handled that in an unstable way. Um, for someone who, in that movie, you know, that had the the right look and the right wallet and the right job and the right house yes she had everything that society says we're supposed to have and she yes. had it in abundance right but yet you can't keep a man <laughs> and you can't be stable in your mind that's right what 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 the rest of us don't do <laughs> you know that we don't have any of that stuff or half of what she had you know so that movie really was I remember when it, when it came out, I think I watched that thing probably 10 times. Oh, okay. Because I, I just, I could not fathom how she became so cray-cray over a guy. Guys play those games all the time. Let's be real. No, that He didn't play a game that was unfamiliar to everybody. No, that's, that's right. You know, right. you know, it is what it is. And for her not to see it coming and then to act that way was kind of, it was, it, she was unstable. That's yes. what that's what not taking that's what not taking care of yourself mentally looks like. That's what that looked like. Yeah, that's right. Any other comments? Okay. I didn't, I didn't see that. Go ahead. So I can't really. I can't. Oh, okay. Hey. <laughs> if this is movie. If this is movie night. I I, I don't. It's, it's I don't a good one. <laughs> <laughs> What's the name of the movie? It, the thin, thin line, line between love and, love and hate. Martin Bobby. Lawrence and Bobby Brown oh. and uh, uh, Lynn Whitfield. Oh, okay. the Queen of Evil. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna yeah. take Faith Black card until she yeah. get until she watch that movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I haven't seen it either. Yeah. <laughs> Yes. Okay. Thank you, Robin. Yes. <laughs> you too, Robin. I'm gonna Thank take you, your part. We need to get together, have a movie night, get the popcorn. <laughs> I'm telling you, that movie's amazing, y'all. Yeah, it is. Oh, I it's... gotta see it. Where, I guess where would it be now since it's a it's an old movie, right? You probably go to Walmart and buy it for three or five dollars on a DVD. <laughs> yeah, yeah. This BT little might still play it. You never know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Because Della Reese but, was his mama and she tried to warn him oh too. Oh my. <laughs> Della Reese, who they Della Robin said, oh my. Yeah. I think Regina King was in it too. She was yes, in Regina movie. King was yeah. in it. Yeah. 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 Okay. All of I'm, our famous black actors, they were in there. Mm -hmm. Okay, when I when I initially um started the conversation tonight, I said. You know, our topic is teach me how to love. Um, and my next thought is this, teach me how to love. Who is this teacher we're talking about? Is the teacher yourself? Is the teacher the world? Is the teacher another person? Is it the teacher the Bible? Is the teacher the Holy Spirit? There are many teachers around us, but the question is, really, are you teachable? Are you being taught only things that are earthly value? My question is to you, whoever the you are, who is your teacher? It's a question that we must ask ourselves personally. And that's a question I pose 
even unto myself, to all that's on the phone. Or not on the phone, I'm sorry, on the Zoom. Zoom meeting. Who is this teacher for you? Um, hmm. That's a question I'm posing. So I say to each and every one that willing to maybe say or expound on it, who is the teacher for oneself? I, was, um, I think for me, uh, I know who the teacher used to be. <laughs> it wasn't God, <laughs> it was whoever, you know, but um, now the teacher, it, I mean, that's a prayer that I, that I do pray, you know, Lord, teach me how to love. I want to okay. love like Christ love, you know, I want that kind of love um, in any relationship. Yes. And then also, I believe you teach other people how to love you by how you carry yourself, by how yes. you, you know, how, what you will accept, what you won't accept, what you will stand for, what you won't stand for, you know? So in that sense, it would be me teaching someone else how to love me. Does that make sense? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so. Yeah. So, so, I agree. so Robin, what you, you're saying then, yeah. Your teacher is God. Yes. That's what I'm hearing from you. Yeah. So I, I reference him, mm -hmm. which is the epitome of love, and I allow that in me so I can give it out to someone else. That's yeah. what I'm hearing, correct? Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, yes. Any anybody else? Well, I I think I for me. I think it's God. I think it's the Holy Spirit. And I think it's, uh, it could be examples that, you know, I see that I, I see the type of love that I desire to have. You know, I mean, we might not have a laundry list of those, <laughs> those types <laughs> of people, but, right. you know, I do believe God will bring people into our lives that you see them live and, and you will say, oh, I would like that. Or, you know, it gives you like a menu if you're going to the restaurant of choices, you know, that, that you would like to be entreated. But I also feel, and I, I'm saying for me, is that I've learned how to love me more and, and love others better based on experiences that I've had that were not the best experiences <laughs> of love. Because that's from those experiences that you have or you have um, gone through in relationships, I believe that from those those teachable moments in the relationship then you can make those decisions of what you would accept and not accept you know from those experiences so i do believe on our journeys you know of life that those life experiences will teach us mm -hmm. what we what we desire and what we don't desire to have and then we can um then make I, I guess uh decisions or determinations if somebody comes into our lives and and develop a relationship from the experiences that you have with that person you can start ha having like a checklist check check uh -uh. nope yeah yet yeah, check check nope <laughs> you know you yeah. start making those determinations and then you can have communication and say hey I don't like that. Then you have to have mm -hmm. a voice. Yes. To say if they love you, they will they will honestly listen to you yes. and listen to your heart. And if they really care, then they would um hopefully make some um changes or or then direct their love in a different way that is authentic and intentional because that's what you need. You know, yeah. and then you hear them for what they need, because we might not be, you know, doing what what they desire. So, you know, it's a give and take. So, so faith is that fact finding or 
gathering data. You say a checklist. I keep data going. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, for real. I mean, you know what I'm saying? I mean, yeah. you, you, whatever, um, because as your relationship evolves, then you get more data because you just don't experience the same thing over and over again, right? So yeah. as you have different situations that come in your life that might not be all happy and good, it might be some really some hard places um, that might not be between you and that person. It could be maybe your family or your children or, or something. And when you start to develop your relationship, then you start to care about um, those um, things that, that impact you that might not have any responsibility for the other person, but they care. And they, and you know, and they, and, and if they care and they love you, then they want to see what's best. Yes. Any other comments? No, no one else. It, you know, uh, and and basically, um, faithful to your sin, I, I, I think you have to not be walking around with blinders on and you have to really pay attention. You know, I think one of the things that now is, is present moments. Be in tune to the now and to even be fully present where you are and, and not, and be conscious be conscious in the present moment of what's happening. Because I think sometimes we wish we was in another situation or whatever. Whatever's happening to you now, you own your path. And it's not always the sweetest, but it is what it is. And wishing to be somewhere else is not changing that. So I think we have to adapt and, and, and move into the direction we want to go. Um, my next um, topic would be, not topic, but the thing that I wanted to talk about is this. Falling in love, being in love, true love is the depth of the false self. We love to fall in love. To fall in love, you have to take risks, changing yourself from this person. You have to let go of who you thought you were before you loved this person. You're giving them power to change you. You don't give your partner the power to change you in a positive way, of course. I do not think you love them. You, your unconscious knows your soul, knows that that's your soul. So my, my question is, we talk about love, we talk about loving another person. Can we love enough to give ourselves to that other person? To allow that person to be loved by you? It's a lot to give yourself to someone else, but it's a risk. So are, are you willing to take that risk? Or what makes you take that risk? That's my question. What makes a person takes that risk for someone else? Any I comment? I don't know yet. You don't know yet? <laughs> I, I, I don't know yet. I'm still, I'm still trying to figure that out. You know, I, I think I'm still in that place where I'm just now starting to just accept me. And, and I think that's, that's why I'm still here because I'm just now loving myself, no matter what skin I'm in and what's going on. I'm loving the changes that God is doing to me. So for me, I think that, that, that love that I'm starting to feel for myself, that's what I want that other person to, uh, what is the word? Um, enhance, like make it better. Right. I already got it. I'm getting it, and I already got it. So for me, it, it's just that person has to make me make me better. 
or at least, you know, add on to where I'm at. But I think starting with loving yourself, loving God, loving who he's making you to be, all right. of you, the good, the bad, the ugly, all of it. Like once you are in tune with that, once you love that, and I always say once you like it, because you got to love it. But once you actually like yourself, like I like myself. Right. You know what I mean? I don't mind hanging out with myself. You know, I think I'm funny. I think I'm I'm hilarious. You know what I mean? So I once I started liking every part of me, um, any anything that comes to me right now is gravy. You know, it's just gonna be better. So I don't know what that what that will look like, but I know what it would feel like. It, it needs to feel like how I'm feeling now, which is about myself. So if you don't like anything about yourself at all, like if you don't like you, anybody's going to be able to pour into you and, and, and make you, you know, manipulate you like putty. So that's why I said I really don't know yet because I'm, I'm still, I'm just now loving me and I'm liking it. Like, yes, I don't want nobody yes. messing around with it right now. Right, right. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Well, you know, it's, it's, a, it's kind of a saying and people I've heard um, some authors I've heard some poets I've heard some philosophers say there's a certain thing called a dark night and you say well Mr. Joe what does that mean what is that that dark night is kind of where you are saying Shelly and I think it happens to all of us that dark night is where you coming out of a false self into the true self but in that space, you're not still with the false self, but you're not totally with the true self yet. So it's a dark area. And in that, it's scary. If that makes sense. It's a place where I'm losing the false self to get to the true self, but I'm not in either one I'm kind of in, in that in between that's called a dark night and I think that happens for all of us especially when we are getting to the conscious person it's kind of like we was talking about last week when we was talking about Bishop Long and all of that and then at one point you not putting you on the spot but you saw it one way then you came back and saw it another way and that's kind of like going between two worlds, if I'm making sense here. And it, it, it is. It's a place for all of us who we are changing and allowing that, unfolding. And, and I think this is basically what this is talking about here. Um, so we all go through that. But you know you're changing for the better. And then you say, well, how do you know? You love yourself when you're by yourself. You don't feel, you know, I know we in this season and like I was saying earlier, we went through Valentine's Day, you know, but there is a such thing as loneliness and being alone. They're not the same thing. You know, loneliness is a place where you don't feel like no one loves you. You just in that place. And sometimes, um, we all go through that, but you have to get to that point to know thyself and to love thyself. And, I, and again, I might re be repeating myself, but this is that place. This is that place, I think, where um, we're talking about here. And uh, I think, again, we all can kind of relate to that. So does anybody else have any comment? Well, well <clears throat> I'm trying to, I'm trying to to walk with you and with this and I'm trying to um I I hear I hear what Shelly's saying and she's in that place where she really really is enjoying this season like where she's at and she don't she don't I, I'm a I'm a speaking bionically she don't want nobody no one nothing no nothing nobody <laughs> uh to mess with her <laughs> <laughs> in this season 
And I see you, Shelly. I see you in the middle of a circle. And I see a lot of protectiveness around you. You know, like, I'm not going to say walls. I'm going to say pillows. <laughs> Soft, you know, they're not told, they're not total walls, <laughs> but they're pillows, you know. Mm -hmm. And, you know, <laughs> I don't know why I'm going in this direction. Lord knows. Go, go but ahead. It's, but it's, it's times in those seasons where something unexpected will happen. And, and what I mean by that is that it, it, Mr. could come in at that time. And that's why I think I saw the pillows because when you can, you know, somebody can get through pillows. <laughs> you know, to the middle, to the middle, but they can't get through the wall. <laughs> but I, I, I see pillows there. And, you know, and sometimes in our most vulnerable times, because um, you have some vulnerability there because you don't want nobody to mess with your stuff. Don't mess with my stuff right now. But you're secure of where you are. And sometimes, you know, that's where, that's where Mr. Wright comes right on in. In I receive it. <laughs> oh, you do. I'm glad you receive it. I'm ha I'm happy receive to receive it. it. And and then those other um those other areas in which you know when Joe's talking about that 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 gray dark. zone on there. I'm not gonna say dark. I'm gonna say gray. Is that okay? <laughs> okay. I'm gonna say gray, like the color I got on is gray. It's all black, <laughs> but it ain't black. It's gray. It's gray. It's like in that gray zone where that compliment comes in to your life. Mm -hmm. and it helps you get to that wholeness. Yes. You know, because I truly believe that, and I think we kind of talked about this a couple, maybe a couple of weeks ago, that I don't, I don't believe you have to be a hundred percent healed healed to be in a healthy relationship yes I, I i don't think we we totally get to that perfection uh i mean you could but i'm just saying i don't think everybody will get to that place um and that healing might just be that relationship to bring you to where god wants you, you know god wants you to be um and then if you are healed, that's all, hey, that's a hundred, that's 100 good. I said, you know, I'm happy for you to be in that healthy place and to be totally healed, to be ready. But I haven't seen totally healed. I haven't, I haven't seen anybody totally healed because I don't know where they've been, number one. Yes. And I'm not judging anybody if they are not, but I'm just saying, as far as I'm concerned, because like we talked about triggers, you know, you think you healed and then somebody does something to you and triggers you like that, mm -hmm. then are you healed? No. Or do you just work through that trigger to know what that feels like and you know how to handle it? Yeah. You know, and, and but, you know, I, it, it boils down to trusting. Are you ready to be transparent? Are, are you ready to step into, put your big toe in the water hmm. and kind of to see if the water's warm or cold or you know, whatever <laughs> the temperature is yeah. and then trusting because you got to trust. And I know if you, if I've been hurt before and I'm like, I know how it feels because my heart, my heart was like not feeling it. I was not yeah. feeling that. I don't even want to have no relationship. I was just closed off. But when your heart starts, you start to feel your heart again. You start feeling that tenderness. And that's not a, for someone. You just feel it. You yeah. know, it didn't have to be about nobody else. 
just you and God. And then you start feeling that tenderness again, you know, then are you ready to embrace someone else and, and deal with, you know, whatever comes? It's about faith as well. Trust, faith, you know, uh, all that. Love. Mm -hmm. you know, what is love? Yeah, at my age, it's like, mm -hmm. do I like you? <laughs> do i like you i like you i like to be around you i you know when i got married at 22 i, I thought i was like drop dead in love you know um, yeah. you you couldn't tell me nothing i was in love i, I don't even know if i was in love i was infatuated i was lust or whatever right you know right. it's just that first experience you know and i haven't felt that way before just to be honest, I, I haven't felt like that. And I don't even know if that was healthy, <laughs> what I was feeling. But I think I'm 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 more sound now and 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 I am um at a place where you know to be able to share and open mm -hmm. up and talk and and be able to enjoy and and like to be I shoot, I've been in love with somebody because I I ain't like them. You know what I'm saying? I, I didn't like them. I loved them, but I didn't like them. You know, so mm. so um, I didn't like where where he was. I didn't like where he where he has grown, what he grew, grew to. I didn't right. like his posture at that time. So you know, we were married, but I didn't like him like that. <laughs> I, I didn't. I mean, not for a while. So people change. People yeah. change as they get older or whatever, go through situation, they change. And, you know, either we embrace their changes and, and walk with them through it. Or if it's a little bit too much for you, you have to make a decision. You, you have to make a decision if you, if that's what you want, you know, mm -hmm. that's what I see. It. I, I, I appreciate what Faith said earlier. I'm going to piggyback a little bit. I think I think it's it's the peace that I have. Yes. I don't want nobody messing with that peace. No. Mm -mm. You know, and I think a lot of us don't want that. You, you're comfortable, um, especially when you're you're in a season where you're enjoying your singleness a lot. You're, you know, for the first time in, in forever, I can travel when I want to, go where I want to, eat what I want to, wear what I want to. Uh, I have a dog. You know, he didn't want a dog. I got a dog now. Just these little, 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 little things, you know? Yeah, yeah. But, but my peace, I, I, I paid a lot for it. And so anybody that's deciding to come into my life cannot disturb that, will not disturb that. Yes, yes. Um, and I think the pillows that Faith was talking about that surrounded me, I feel it every day. Yeah. And that's that confidence. It's not uh, arrogant. I'm not boasting. Mm -hmm. I'm not bragging. But when you have the joy of the Lord inside of you and that light, when he has ignited something inside of you that's been dead for so long, it, it might come off as arrogant and it might come off as uh, I know it all or whatever, but it's, it's that peace, that, 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 that self-love. I yes. enjoy myself. Right. I can sit here all day. I work from home and I pretty much do everything now at home, mm -hmm. um, you know, Today, when I went to the vet with my dog, even when you were saying earlier, people will, you have to show people how to love you. Right. Um, you have to show people how to treat you and your loved ones as well. Yeah. You know, and that's also a form of, of love because if you out here just yelling at your kids and cussing at the dog and, mm -hmm. and they're going to treat them like that. That's and right. I don't want to see my loved ones getting treated like crap either. So I have to show people how to love them how to love me. It's a lot of work. Yes. Love takes a lot of work and you have to, but it starts with yourself. Yes. So the minute I walk out this door, everybody is going to know how to love me, how yes. to handle me. Cause I will let you know how to handle me because I, I, I paid the cost already. Yes. So I'm not going to pay it again. I don't want to go through that toll booth one more time. <laughs> so if it means me being single for a little while longer to get someone that will appreciate it 
and and acknowledge the fact that this woman done been through enough. I'm not even gonna do mm-hmm. her like that. Right. Even when I, even when I decided I was gonna go with Bubba down the street, even Bubba was like, "Nah, man, you too good for me." Uh uh-uh. uh. Yeah. That's that pillow. Right. That's that pillow. That's all I got to say. Yeah. <laughs> and, and hearing what you're saying is this, Shelly, and 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 giving tribute for a moment to the gardeners of our heart, this Black history. Um, Maya Angelou said this, there's a place when in each and every one of us that no one, no brother, no sister, no husband, no lover, get chance to violate. You are saying, I've stepped to this, and if you come here, I'm gonna tell you, get back. Cause you do not get to talk to me any kind of way. You do not get to treat me any kind of way. And the reason being is that place is the oneness that you have with your heavenly father. That's where you are. And you value that. You step into that. And, and, and I think to me, a person that comes to you have to be growing themselves because commonality can be seen in other people. Love can be exuded from you, even with your countenance, even as you walk. You walk, you said something about confidence. See, the, the spread of confidence is better than the circulation of money. And the circulation of confidence is better than the circulation of money. Because with confidence, it comes from within that person. Courage and all comes from that to be the best you that you're supposed to be. Not anybody else, just Shelly, Shelly, Shelly coming in too. And, and I think that's a place that we all should have a yearning. It's a yearning within all of us that, that's, that has a connection with the heavenly father. And once you get into that, you don't want to move from that. You want to live from your heart. I think there's an openness. And when we open up our heart to the things of God, he pours his love in us and we're open for that. We're a vessel of love. And that's kind of the direction. You, this love thing, and I don't want to call it a thing, but it's nothing you can contain. Love, it always expands. You can't contain something that expands, that, had, that is so much bigger than you. And, and I say all that, this is kind of what the section will end in, and the, in the month we then is all about love. Um, anybody so, else have any more? Go ahead. Uh-huh. <clears throat> Excuse me. I want to ask you a question. Okay. So teach me how to love, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. So from a man's perspective, when you're in a relationship and, and you're in that place where you um you really like that person you know everything is great chemistry all this all that and you're you're just saying that love is a capacity i I, that you have to give love capacity to grow right right okay so with all that said i kind of hear like a recipe going on in my head like like a spoonful of this and a cup of that and, a, <laughs> and, a, and a, you know sift right, this right. and an egg and two mix it up where where does true commitment come in that recipe commitment to the relationship when i mean you can love somebody all day but like i mean as we've heard um like Bishop Noel Jones and his girlfriend, it took him 25 years 
to ask her. Where was you at weekend. last week? I, I, was, <laughs> I, was, I was in Norfolk, Virginia <laughs> last week, last Thursday. That's why I wasn't with you all. Yes, it was Juicy Girl. Yes. Oh, no, I did was it is the replay out there? That's yeah, I'm gonna, I gotta go hear the replay, but it was good. Yeah. When you know, when does that when is the commitment to the person and to the relationship go? I mean, I know that's just one situation. Probably had some others last week, and I'm sorry I'm going there. I wasn't there last week. That's what but, I go for. Go, go, go. But yeah. I just wanted, I just wanted to know when does when does the light bulb or the switch go up to commitment how long does that take in order to, for that to to manifest well, well, i guess the question when you say commitment are you talking to marriage or committed to the relationship um you talking, talking about, about all that i'm talking about, talking about all that i'm talking about commitment okay you have a commitment to the relationship how how long i mean how how long, I know everybody's an individual and I know every relationship is different, but how long do you, does a woman have to, if you're doing it God's way, it says a man that finds, right? How long do you have to wait until that commitment? And it seems like it should be a line, a line, <laughs> a line somewhere that says, okay, uh, five years, four years. You know wh where? When do? When does a man? When does that click off in his head? This is the one. Good question. When does that happen? That's your question. Is when does that happen? That you know, and each person that's different. I think you know. Even when we go back to the scenario last week, it, it it's it's. The spiritual, I think this, I think it's a spiritual growth that has to be happened between the, pe the person, both individuals. And, I, I, and, and the thing is, growth there, I think it has to gro be growth with equals. And what I mean is, I should be able to have conversation. I should be able to conversate with you in the spiritual realm that says, I'm gonna push you to your highest level and, you, and I'll allow the same for you. Because equals, we're gonna make this work. I don't think, you know, we talk about unequally yoked. I think that's, that has so much value because I allow you to be the best you you can be. So the other part comes along. I don't know if it's a timeline because when, they, when this gets to that point, wherever that is with that person, however they do it, I think it, it, that's, the, that's the individual's decision. It's kind of like, you know, we were talking about that with Noah Jones. It happened and- 25 years. 25 years. That's too long. Look, I'm going to tell y'all right now. <laughs> I ain't waiting for nobody for 25 years. I'm going to tell you that right now. I mean, I don't care who it is. Even if even if God is telling you, even if he's telling you to I wait. I don't think he's going to tell me to wait 25 years. Uh-oh. I really don't. I don't. I just don't. <laughs> I don't think God is going to tell, tell me to wait, sit there and wait 25 years. Mm -hmm. 25 childbearing child years too. I, I didn't hear you. you, said what? Those were her childbearing years too. That's the best years of your life. I know, she gave it all. years, I, you know, I, I mean, I'm 62. I don't know if I got 25 years. <laughs> You see what I'm saying? You hear what I'm saying? Yeah. So, That's why he went on and proposed to her because heck, another woman wouldn't have stuck it out that long. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's just, I, I, you know, it's like, okay. Yeah. Whew. Yeah. <laughs> I'm pretty mm -hmm. <laughs> it's That's a lot. That's a lot to ask 
I mean, of anybody. And, you, and it is it is between the two people because right. maybe both of them at one point say, "Hey, we we just gonna be we just gonna be in this relationship. We're gonna be friends and we're gonna be companions, but neither one of us want to be married." Okay, that could have been the situation for maybe twenty of the twenty five years. <laughs> I don't know know where that is, but I mean, that could have been, you know, and I'm just like, you know, I just don't feel that we should hold. And I'm not saying we as we, I'm saying generally speaking, I don't think we should hold people up. Yeah. Yeah. If, if, if you, if you feel like, if like Marilyn has said, she is looking for marriage okay yeah. <clears throat> and she's up front with that she'll say I, this is what i'm looking for if you ain't looking for that and i'm looking for that then we ain't a match that's unequally yoked yeah. right but don't say you are and then you have me wait, sitting over here waiting in the corner or whatever for five three years two years or whatever and then I get anxious or or antsy about it. And then all of a sudden it's like, well, you know. I guess I'll go on ahead and marry you. Yeah, I guess I'm ready now. Or no, I don't think I'm going to marry, you know. Almost like Gina and Martin when she was saying either he wanted to marry her after being um, together so long or she took a job in New York. He was talking about, I guess you got me now. You got Will me you now. marry me? Damn. <laughs> you know, it was yeah. Like, yeah. And, 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 you know, that was the attitude of it. She said, Thank mm-hmm. you for the proposal. Now I got a plane to catch. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Wow. It, it takes somebody... two, though. It takes two, yeah. though. Yeah. We don't yeah. know what, what, what her mindset was. Again, just like that movie Joe was bringing up, we don't know what her mindset was. She could be. No. Just as cuckoo for cocoa puffs, and just <laughs> thought this was the best deal in, in mm-hmm. town. Yes, you know yes. the bishop. Bishop know she wasn't gonna get no better, and so whatever he wanted to, however long it was gonna take, she was willing to wait because in her mind nobody else wants her. Mm-hmm. You know, so she, you know, who knows? Who knows? Yes, you know, yes. At the end of the day, we got two leaders in the church that went in twenty five years to get married. Yeah, two. Yeah, she was also in the church. Yeah. Oh, oh, I thought you meant like a um pastor or whatever. Like, yeah. Well, he's a bishop over a church, right. so I'm just right. Yeah, he's a leader yeah. over people. Mm-hmm. You're le- This is yeah. right. I thought you meant it was mm-hmm. another man who did the same thing. No. Two leaders. No. Yeah. About. No. Yeah. Yeah. Have I, both of them. Just somebody. Did somebody have a question in the chat box? Or, oh, let me see. I'm comment. so sorry, y'all. No, it's okay. Faith just brought me back to last week. Hold on. <laughs> um, this, this is a... That sounds like a situation. I thought I saw something go across the screen. Maybe I did. Oh, yes. Uh, Fabiola said, it sounds like a hostage situation where she developed <laughs> Stockholm Syndrome. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Wow. Well, that's good. That might have been what it was. It's, Who knows? It's, it's, that was done by Fabiola. Yeah, Fabiola said that. And you know what? <laughs> that commitment thing is not just on the man's side. I mean, commitment for, for both people. I mean, I don't want to sound mm-hmm. like it's a teeter-totter and, and it's all on the man. But yeah, it, it can be both. And, and, you know, and I do believe that when you're in a relationship, you just don't give 50-50. It's 100-100. Yes, it is. Period. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. Uh-huh. Um, any more comments? <laughs> I was just like, I, okay. turn it up. I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> no, no, it's all Tamara good. got her mic open. If Tam- <laughs> I think Tamara wanted to say something. Okay. Well, everything, I'm just agreeing with everything. And then just, um, when it comes down to the, uh, even talking about the commitment thing, I, when that, I was like, wow. You know, when I heard that last week, I wasn't able to join in, join in, but to me, the, the importance in that commitment, but also like Shelly was saying, I need I love myself. So I expect that man to love himself. 
So that's going to be that hundred and hundred. But also yeah. when we're around each other, I'm going to listen to what he's saying. Is he really yes. matching up or is he just, yes. you know, is it yes. perpetrating? Like I put in the tech that uh, thing, <laughs> perpetrating mean they, they acting like it, but they're not really feeling it. They're not really in it. They just want to act like they committed. And so, you know, just there's, and I know there's, a, you know, the discernment, but that's that, you know, just trying to make sure, you know, just uh, like Shelly saying, you, I'm not, I, 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 I've learned, but I've just, now I'm just, I love everyone. Uh, and I've learned to not take, you know, not to be on the offensive, but also I've learned that wisdom that also that sometimes people play games. And so that's yeah. what I'm to, you know, yeah. very observant, but then, you know, it's like, that's where I think I am, right? I'm, I, I'm free and I can go places, be by myself. And, you know, I know the Lord's with me. I'm never by myself, but the thing is that I have fun. And I was telling my daughter that I like to, I like to dance. When I was married, he didn't know how to dance. So I didn't dance. Okay. And then, um, there's a, and my personality I was still kind of the same, you know, of quiet, but yet mm -hmm. talkative, you know, and like to laugh, but didn't laugh so much with it. So it's like when you learn your lesson about allowing a person, you don't want to change for that person where they take you down. That's right. Like you said, That's you right. want to go up. Uh, I'm uh, already uh, up. Well, I'm going to expect that person to enhance me. Right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes, enhance me. I want to laugh. I want to, you know, it's just so much more. Yeah. I don't want to just yeah. sit up here, person, you just sit up here just all serious all the time. We'll talk about the news. I, You know what? I, I like updates. Come on, let's watch something that's uplifting. <laughs> or, but to me, marriage is a teamwork. And a lot of times, and that's another thing that's important, you know, when it comes down to 100 and 100, it's teamwork. I'm gonna encourage his vision. He gonna encourage my vision. Amen. And usually, the man, yeah. and usually the visions work together, so it's not yeah. gonna really be going opposite direction. So, those are just my thoughts of when it comes down to love and being committed. I think when you walk in the same direction and you have those compatible, still got things you're gonna have to sometimes have to yeah, compromise, yeah. you know. Yeah. But you work through it, but. Yes, yeah, definitely. Yeah, yes. Yeah. Love yeah. that. Love it. Right. You know, it kind of leads into my next thought is this spiritual partnership is a partnership between equals for the purpose of spiritual growth. If if that other person is growing up too, it is mutual. You push each other to your fullest potential, love has to expand. But what love is expanding for you? Human love varies and changes. Spiritual love never changes but varies. Divine love never changes and never varies. That's the love from our heavenly father. It never changes, never varies. But human love, say I could love you tonight, you give me flowers in the morning, you wake up and say, your breath stinks. I don't love you anymore. And that's that's this, I mean, that's too, that's going from high to low. And that, I love you when you give me gifts. <laughs> and that's manipulative love mm -hmm. you know and you, we you, i think we can kind of look at all of that and pick that and you can see that you've seen it spiritual love never changes but varies yeah. but divine love again i know i'm repeating myself never changes and never varies mm -hmm. so the the part even to my, we're saying the part of spiritual partnership 
So Shelly, if somebody comes into your situation, they got to be doing what you do. Willingly. Or, or willing, right. There you go. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Willingly. And, and I think Marilyn mentioned it a lot on you know, one of the sessions with how even a marriage can pull you down rather than pull you up. Mm -hmm. Because it becomes kind of competition where yeah. maybe the husband don't want the wife to outshine him or vice versa. And that to me, what is that about? That ain't what this, I mean, for me to want to pull you down, is that showing love? No, that is selfishness. That don't yeah. look like love. I mean, so, I mean, so what we're saying here, and I think all of us are saying is, there's got to be common, there's got to be com some common elements here for us to really understand each other. When I can see in Shelly what I have in me, mm -hmm. you can recognize that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But you see it, you, you know what that looks like. And then if, if I'm not getting that, you know it's not there. That's, I mean, some things just cut and dry. All the water do not mix, it's just like that. They not common elements. And as simple as a turn. Go, go ahead, Shelly. I, I can go on a date. I've been on dates with, with someone and we've had conversations over the phone. Everything was clicking over the phone. Um, and the minute that we, we actually meet, you know, it is, it's dead. It, there's yeah. nothing there. It is, I mean, you'll know, Yeah. you know, and because of where I am, like I said, in my piece that I am, I don't, I don't need to challenge that. I don't need to second guess that. Mm -hmm. I don't need to say, well, I'll go on another day and see if maybe, maybe it was a fluke. Maybe, you know, he wasn't his best self. I just, I just know. I just know yeah. without a shadow of a doubt, you're going to bring drama to my life. Uh, you're going to bring some, some things that I don't want. I'm not ready for it. And that's okay. You know, because when the right one comes, I, I honestly believe I will know it will match my peace. It will enhance my yes. life. I will, I will absolutely know because God wants the best for me. That's and, right. and that is why he has me in this place in these sessions, you know, for the last year to gain back my strength, my confidence, and now to show others. That's the twist for me. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I never in my wildest dreams thought I would be telling my story publicly to strangers and then helping them walk their walk, watching them walk their walk. Right. And me walking with them going, we're going through this together. Yes, yes. A lot of these women, I haven't heard them open up, you know, all year. And the last couple of weeks, they have been opening up. Yes. And I just sit back quietly and I go, but God. Yes, that's it's right. It's a healing. Tonight, I saw Tracy's healing. I saw it. Whether yes. she wants to admit it or not, the minute she said, I have never said this out loud to anybody. That's right. That's what these sessions are about. Because last year, I said that last year. Yes. Saying, I've never said this out loud. And once you let the devil know that you ain't scared, and I said scared, <laughs> that you ain't scared no more, right. that you are ready to talk your talk, tell your testimony, the doors are going to start opening up. Yes. That peace is going to start coming in. Yes. That joy is going to start coming in. You're not you're going to, you might even fool yourself and say, I don't need this session no more. I love me. I got it. Trust me. I've been there, done that. I came right back. Right. That's just one little piece of the puzzle that is for you to open up. Once you open up, once you guys, and I'm not saying tell your business. I'm, I'm really not. I'm just saying, don't let the devil hold you back because all it takes is to tell him, I saw you. I recognized you in my last relationship. And you ain't gonna do it again. That's right. That's all you're saying. Yes. That's all I gotta say. <laughs> and I think you speak that. You speak to that. And 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 we have to learn to speak to prosperity. Speak to that very thing you want. In all sincerity from your heart, you speak that. And it's your heart. 
So, you know, you know pretty well where you are in that, in that whole scenario. I think you have to have an inkling of that. And uh, no, any other comments? Okay, well, I'm gonna move on because uh, we got, we're getting close to the hour. Um, one other thing I want to bring up is this. What, what love looks like from a prophetic point of view. This is what I want to say. Don't think that you, myself, or any of us, direct the course of love. For love, if it finds you worthy, directs your course. Love has no other desire than to fulfill itself. So when you love, you should not say, God is in my heart, but rather, I'm in the heart of God. So when we say, I'm falling in love, no, you're not falling, you're tripping. You don't fall in love. But love has a way of finding you. When you allow God to pour into your heart, he's saying, how did you get here? Did you find the love or love actually says, I'm come to you. I invite you into me. And it's just thought. I see you thinking hard, Shelly. What do you think? Shall I, shall I read it I, again? I, I just, I love the way you put things and it makes me think. It's, it's, I love it. I don't know, I know every other woman out here, we sit back and go, wow, I didn't look at things like that or I didn't, I've never heard it put that way before. So you just, you just always have me go back and I'm, I'm thinking like, wow, that's, that was powerful. But say it again. You can say it again. All right. All right. Let's let's don't <laughs> think. Don't think you can direct the course of love. Mm -hmm. For love, if it finds you worthy, directs your course. Mm -hmm. Love has no other desire than to fulfill itself. So when you love. You should not say, God is in my heart, but rather I'm in the I'm heart of God. God. Yeah. So my thoughts a little bit on that. God is love, love is God. You can't contain the infinite. You can't contain the heart of God, the love that God is. He's, he's ultimate, it's just too big. You can't, you can't bang an international, um, worldly, infinite love and bring it down into a small situation. You can't, if that makes sense. You cannot bring that. You have to allow it to find you. Now, this is something different, very different than what we, but what we're used to knowing or even hearing. But it is like you said, Shelly, it's thought provoking, very much so. So does anyone have a comment? Yeah, that um, makes me think that, um, not think, but knowing that we're, in the heart of God, that brings us to a place of protection. Yes. And covering. Yes. So that when it is time for love to find us in, in the natural, um, we don't need to, and this is this is the ultimate, okay? <laughs> we don't need to be in a place where we are afraid to, to love, to really just open up 
and be vulnerable and transparent because the knowledge, the understanding, the awareness that we're in God's heart and so we're protected and he's covering us. That allows us, I believe that is what allows us to just put it put it out there when it's when it's the right person, you know. Yeah. Yeah. To just be. Um that's just yes. I mean it's 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 just so huge. It's a huge thing. When you talk about the love, it goes in so many directions mm -hmm. because it's nothing that becomes smaller. It's always, and I know I've been saying that, it expands. And then when you are a vessel of that, what else can come out of you willing to allow that to come in, abide? That's when you become that vessel for God in the earthly realm, in the earth. When we move, we're moving in that, if, if that makes sense. That's ultimate. What else can you get from me? You can't, cause it abides. And I, all the stuff that was there that didn't look like him, I'm allowing him, Father, I'm the willing vessel to do what I need to do in the earthly school to glorify you in everything I do. And that is just an amazing revelation about this thing we call love. Tamara, you had a thought, look like. Yeah, <laughs> I, have a I said basically what you said just answered the question in regards to Noel yeah. and his 25 years and that woman. When God is prophetically, divinely interested in them, the world can go, what? Why? I can't believe it. They probably said the same thing. I can't believe I'm still standing in this. But God placed that love in them that made them stand still and walk, walk through whatever he's working out of them. Because there was some things. He went through a divorce. She probably had some things from whatever. But that love is God's love. Yeah. That was it. <laughs> they path of walking the same path. You answered. That's it. Yeah. It was God. And, and if you watch that video of the proposal, the look on her face, like I was saying last week, it's as if they just met, they've been dating for a year. Yes. And they had a glow and a look on her face on that stage, like, like he's just not proposing after a year of dating. Mm -hmm. She's been waiting all this time for that proposal. Mm -hmm. Whether we like it or not, because I, I personally didn't like it. And that's just my opinion, but I get, I got it. You know, mm -hmm. I got where it was, but it's, it's a personal thing between us. Yes. The crack, crack box proposal, everything he did, I saw in that snippet what their relationship was like. Mm -hmm. It's personal. It's a, yes, it's it a is. Yes. That's their walk. Like, like Tamara was saying, that's their walk. That's, that's, that's their, what he put in them. That's what he wanted to put in them. And yes, yes. You know, we might not like it. Back in Noah's day, they didn't like what Noah was doing. They didn't like what right. Moses was doing. When God calls right. you, sometimes it just looked crazy. It looked crazy. Yeah. To the rest of us, it looks absolutely insane. Exactly. Like Faith was saying, Faith said she would never do that. <laughs> oh, 25 years, right? 25 <laughs> years. I, Is that the movie, The Proposal or Proposal you're talking about? Mm-mm. Oh, you talking no. about Noel? You talking about Noel Jones? Have you watched the video <clears throat> he to her? Oh, okay. Yeah. If, if you see the video, watch the video of the proposal of him proposing to her. It is, it is, it's going to put you through a lot of emotions. It, it takes you, you 25 years, baby. Do I want to do I want to watch it, really? It, it might make you upset. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, I, want, I want to be like you said. I'm in, I'm in my little circle with my pillows. Okay. <laughs> and I don't want nobody to mess with me right there. <laughs> I, oh, Lord, no. It's, yes, it's, yes. it's not what we think, but I think I think that it had purpose for them, too. It, yes. it was 
do. So, oh, it was cute. Okay, it was, it was cute. cute. It was cute. To me. <laughs> it wasn't cute. It, to me, it was just twenty five years. I need, I need some horses coming on. I need, I need to work. <laughs> he didn't get on his knee. I mean, he's seventy something years old. He he did, but it was like, <laughs> bop, and he would back up. Yeah. <laughs> Help me get up. Yeah. yeah. The and energy. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not like I'm judging. I'm in my life, <laughs> a 25 year investment. I wanted, I would have wanted to see a little bit more, but again, their whole relationship has made all of us question why would not the proposal too? So yeah, yeah. You know, I get you know, and then some people uh, that's not what it is. You know, like some women like. They got to have a rock that you can, it's so heavy. You, you right. can keep it on your finger. <laughs> Some don't care. You know, it could just, yeah. I mean, it's the thought, you know, it's the love and, you know, picking it, picking it and putting it on. Everybody got different things, but I, but years is something you, I can get another <laughs> ring 10 years down, <laughs> make it look a little better than what I got now. But 25 years, no, nah, that's, <laughs> you, can't, you can't give me 25 years back yeah I, I would have won my mama my family I mean everybody flown in from whatever country they in a move. It, a move. 25 a move. years yeah. of, of me giving up my because like he, he even said it she couldn't have you know no kids I mean they could have yeah. kids out of wedlock you know so it was like she gave up all those years that she could have had babies because she's younger than him. Bishop Knowles is in his 70s. And she's younger than him. So she missed out on so many years of all, you know, I just, I expect a little you bit, bit, bit more from my bishop. <laughs> hmm. You know what? We have to even, I just got this and I'm like, okay. Hmm, Holy Spirit. Hmm. Okay. You know, we are, and I'm going to say, women, not you, Joe, but women, <laughs> sisters, we are life givers, right? Yeah. And, and then when we go into these relationships, you know, we, <clears throat> we want to go in as partners, the partnership. <clears throat> Excuse me, my allergies are acting up. And so in this partnership, we you have goals, he has goals, you have vision, he has vision. And somewhere that stuff intersects, right? Mm -hmm. Some women will sacrifice what their desire mm -hmm. let's say to have children or whatever mm -hmm. in order to be what she needs to be that helpmate for her partner mate or whatever mm -hmm. they will sacri personally sacrifice their own purpose mm -hmm. and make his purpose their purpose mm -hmm. and push everything about them to the back. Maybe that's what she did. I believe. Sacrifice. I like she, how you put that. She got her yeah. own business and everything, but yeah. uh, you know, we put we we put it pause, and we'll help our our help our mates to help them get to where they need to be now 25 years she had to have helped him to be a better man a better bishop yeah. uh, a better person holistically in order to be where he is now unless yeah. he had a maid a cook or somebody do his clothes or she was just there for support to encourage him to say baby you can do it let me mm -hmm. wipe your head off or what, whatever she yeah. did she did something to supplement what he didn't have of yes. course. and if she gave up her dreams and stuff and made it well, I'm gonna embrace your dreams and 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 whatever you do, man of God, that's gonna bless me. That's gonna fulfill me. Maybe. Correct. I don't mm -hmm. know. Yeah. Now you start to see it, Faith. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's that's not me. That's yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that is not me. Yeah. I mean, yeah, but, I just can't see that. I mean, for me. okay. but I, I think faith in all of that though. Uh, I don't think she lost her own identity. I think she gave love, but mm -hmm. 
but even at the same time, she still was her own person. Um, but like you say, I, I don't think 25 years, all that he became or becoming or to date mm. was all about him. No. She, had, she, she was there. Yeah. And, and, and I, you know, he, she was there because he is asking her to marry. He know the value that she brought to him. This is just me talking. And, and, and she, he knew, he knew beyond a doubt that she was there. That she was always there from a support perspective. Mm -hmm. Behind the scenes, she, you know, when you have, and you gotta have, to me, you gotta have somebody you can dialogue with. You can bring things and what do you think about this and what about this story yeah, i agree that's her yeah i mean <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah no 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 i'm saying that i yeah. believe that was her yeah. i mean she yeah, was but... the one that she, he could be intimate with he could that that he could be transparent and and she knew all his flaws and all that stuff and you know she prayed for him and, and probably was his personal intercessor and all that you know yeah. she went, took him through all, went through all that yeah, whole, yeah. i don't know why i feel like there's some undertone behind face yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> probably you too i think i felt I'm, that one too yeah that's right those lines like i think yeah. the 25 years is still sticking with her yes. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, I think, uh, she trying to talk. make it make sense, and so she just like just <laughs> that is a long time though. That is a long time. <laughs> I have to agree with you that is. on that time, <laughs> I, I don't. I don't think I could do that one either. Uh, well, I, I know, know it's too it's, late. It's too I know late this isn't helping at all, but I keep thinking about Abram and Sarah. <laughs> Me too. I mean, Me look, too. yeah, yeah. That's they waited what 20, 20 up there, right? Yeah. She was what now he was over 100? 100? Yeah. She was 75. <laughs> well, well, yeah, you know, that's, a, that's a good yeah. analogy, too, because well, who did she? She said, No, nah, I can't do it. So she gave him that other woman, right? Porcupine. It's porcupine, yeah. yeah. call it. <laughs> yeah. But she took things in her own hands. She took matters into her own hands, yeah. Yeah, and that didn't work out. But, but I do... can imagine her thinking is like, why he wait this long? <laughs> I'm 99 years old. Yeah. Why didn't you do this when I was, you know? Yeah. yeah. Well, they call everything, everything's in God's timing and God's yeah, purpose. Yes. Who knows mm, yes. what's going to come out of this? That's this true. Definitely food for thought. Mm -hmm. I, I got a couple more things and we will we'll wind down and call it a night. Um, this love thing. Um, got three more things. Love possesses not, nor will it be possessed. Love does not bind. Love is sufficient unto love. And I want to say something about a mystic. And that could be any of us. The mystic looks at love as the goal, the center, and the energy. The mystic look at holes, not parts. So that comes from a higher dimension of that person. It comes from the soul. And we really know that the soul is who we truly are. That's that conscious person. Um, and in kind of closing, and I've said it before, genuine love will meet every human need. All of it. Because God is love, love is God. Um, and I, you know, we are in this month of love, but we have to do this year long. We have to live in love and forgiveness and by ch some chance be forgiven. That's the place we want to be. Yeah. And I think even with us coming together in this setting and being open and, uh, and allowing God to come into that place or we allow the love, the openness, 
I think we grow so much. It's always a takeaway. And I'm not saying it because I'm a, <laughs> I can't say the word, <laughs> facilitator tonight. It's just in all of this, I think when we bring love in this situation, again, it's always a takeaway. And I think we better than when we started and when we ended, we've grown. We become better. We come in one way and leave another way. And I hope we all leave with this thing of love in our hearts. Um, I just want to thank everybody for allowing me maybe to impart some things. And in this session, we all are teachers. We all teach. We all students. And it's good to be to, to do both sides because the teacher and the taught together create the teaching and love is the catalyst behind all of it. Um, does anyone have any more closing remarks? Let's have closing remarks from Chef. Let's do that. Can we do that? Um, tonight was just another, another, how do you say banger, banger, banger? <laughs> I love it. Like everybody, you know, tonight was just, um, uh, an eye opener of how we all feel and how we take this love thing. Um, just hearing, like I said, Miss Tracy's heart open up and Miss Robin and everybody, Faith. It's just, it's a beautiful thing, you know, when we open up and when we talk about love. Love is this. Love is what. Love is the greatest of all things. That's what the mm -hmm. Bible says. Yeah. And so for us to sit here and and continue week every week to talk about it and express it whether the good side of love the bad side of love like you said love has so many different facets to it so many different varieties of it um but we we all got to figure out which one fits us which one is for us and once we get that it's first of all like i said it starts with us yes so what we're doing here right now is for us it's not for our mate well it's for our mate you know, but we cleaning it up here. We cleaning it all up in here, cleaning it all up in here. So when God is ready to present us with that, that, that help me with that, that person, we know what it's supposed to feel like, what it ain't supposed to feel like, what yeah. signs to look for. Like I said, when I first started this, this thing, this, uh, Mar this with, with Miss Marilyn, um, I, I, I would have taken anybody. I was at that point where I just, anybody to show me any kind of love, I was okay with that. Whether whether it came with baggage, red flags, uh, triggers, you know, I would have missed every last one of them if it had not been for me coming in here. So I appreciate the space. I hope everybody does appreciate the space. Um, sometimes we sound very repetitive, but I think it is it is it is for your good. Because mm -hmm. when you do get into that relationship or you do start dating actively, you're going to remember every word that we say here. Every Because I'm telling you, it, I've heard Miss Marilyn's voice yeah. in my head in front of a date when he might say something. I'm going, oh, I remember somebody said that in the class. Mm -mm, nope. <laughs> nope. 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 Got to go. Yeah. Got to go. Yeah, it, that's right. So it, it, it might sound repetitive. It might seem daunting. But this is a learn. This is. This is part of your worship to him. This is part of your, um, you know, saving souls and helping other people. This is our job. This is what we're supposed to do. Yeah. And uh, whether it's a small space today or a big space tomorrow, it's worth it. Keep coming in. Like Miss Marilyn say, stay for the benediction. It, this is working. If it ain't working for you, I'm sorry. Maybe you just need to clean your ears out a little bit or something. But stick around. It's going to work itself out. It's going to work itself out. Okay. And so uh, in closing, I would just want to say again, thanking everyone. Also, uh, thanking Merlin for allowing us to have the platform and me to facilitate tonight. I am honored and humbled by the uh, opportunity to, to come in such a way that hopefully some hearts were touched. And I know mine was. So I'm going to say good night to everybody. And be safe. Good night. So good night. Bye bye. Have a good week. Bye bye. Bye bye.